Hello everyone, my name is Rick Jenkins and I'm the publisher at GSA Business Report and we're the media company that serves high-level business executives in the upstate of South Carolina. We fold up under an umbrella of business publications in the state called SC Biz and it's my pleasure to welcome you today to SC Biz TV and another episode of Industry Trends. Today the industry we're discussing is information technology and the trend we're exploring is cyber espionage. Even the words themselves are just a bit intimidating. We got to protect ourselves from these keyboard criminals. Helping me explore this topic today is Derek Davis. Derek is the owner of Intellinet located in Greenville. Intellinet provides computer support, network security, and IT consulting. Derek, welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. I have known you for a while, but I haven't seen you in a while with everything that's going on, so I'm glad you could drop by and we could catch up a little bit. We're socially distanced. <laughs> that's right. This is about <laughs> six foot. Yeah. As long as we don't spit or anything yeah. like that, I think we're good. Derek, you started in Telenet back in 2001. You've got 30 years of IT experience under your belt. And you started in Telenet in 2001, right after the 9-11 tragedy. Tell me about that. Well, it's more than more, more like 35 years of total experience now. <laughs> but um, yeah, right after 9-11, I had been working in corporate IT for uh, about 15, 17 years. And I had seen the, the technology that our internal IT departments in corporate America were, had access to. And I realized that a lot of small businesses needed some help. So it's a great opportunity. That was a great opportunity for me to leave corporate America and start a business. And we did struggle for a while because right after 9-11, things were tough. That's right. But, um, you know, we've been around for almost 20 years now and grown quite a bit. And so we're, uh, we're glad to be here in South Carolina, glad to be in Greenville. All right, Derek, thank you. I'm glad you're here. Uh, i tell you what, though, before we get into the conversation today, uh, I want to show the viewers uh, a fun little video that we put together to okay. promote this conversation today. And viewers, you'll be seeing this pop up on social media channels, and you'll see it pop up on our digital dailies that we put out. Take a look. This is a lot of fun. All right, folks, welcome back. That was a lot of fun, right? I love it. You're going to see it making its rounds. Uh, today, Derek and I are going to talk about cyber espionage. And that basically, Derek, is um, people, bad guys, as we say, as you just saw on the video, uh, really scary dudes that uh, can take information from you without knowing it, without your permission, without your knowledge. We call them keyboard criminals. How do we stop these guys, man? Well, there's... There's a lot of information that is publicly available that people can get just by looking at your website, for example. But there's also a lot of information that's stolen from you that you don't really realize is there. As an IT company, we can do a lot of things from a technical perspective to protect your network, to protect your servers. Uh, but there's some things that we just can't protect you from. And a lot of that just has to do with you protecting yourself. That's right. So that's what we want to that's talk right. about today. we got to be smart. That's we correct. we got to be yeah. smart. Yeah. 
There's only so much we can do from a technical perspective. That's right. But let's talk about some of the ways that these, uh, as I call them, keyboard criminals uh, can get your information. And let's mm -hmm. start with spear phishing. Sure. So spear phishing is basically uh, a way that people can send you an email that's targeted directly to you. Mm -hmm. And there's some information that someone might have that's pertinent to you, might have um, an email signature of someone that you're familiar with, or it may appear to come from someone that's in your organization, but it's targeted at you and it's trying to get you to do something like enter your credentials for your email account or enter your credentials for your bank account, for example. And if someone can capture that information by using a bogus website and some bogus information mm -hmm. sent to you, a lot of people just fall for it. Right. And they'll just right. happily put their credentials in and that information is available to everyone at that right. point. Right. And I, I have never fallen for it to the degree that I put my uh, <laughs> to the degree that I put my credentials in. However, I have fallen for it in the sense that I've gotten emails from my boss uh, mm -hmm. who have asked me something. And I was, I had no reason to think it was not my boss. Correct. Um, but anyway, so uh, that's the way it works, right? That, it's as simple as that, really. And yeah. anyone with a decent amount of technical knowledge can create an email that looks like it's coming from your boss or from your bank or, you know, a friend or acquaintance or whatever. And without being careful, you can divulge information without without your knowing what's going on. That's right. So let me give you an example of a attempted spear phishing attack. Uh, this actually happened with a company here in, in Greenville. Um, I'll show that to you. We don't want to divulge <laughs> anybody's names. That's right. This is a wire transfer request that was sent to a bank. And it has all the company's information on there that was going to be requesting a transfer overseas of close to $400,000. It's even got the guy's signature at the bottom of this email transfer or this, this international wire transfer. The Bank of China. Well, that's not unusual. <laughs> but the fact that his signature is on there right. came from a spear phishing attack. Someone sent someone else in their organization an email. The guy put his credentials in. And the bad guys were able to download his entire email box. Mm -hmm. That email box included documents with his signature on it, information about the organization. So the bad guys had this information and could create this, you know, international wire transfer request. Right. The only way this got stopped was somebody at the bank got suspicious and made a phone call. And they're lucky that that happened. And they saved 400, almost $400,000 right. and a lot of trouble. You know what? That's really scary. But I'll tell you something that scares me, just the name of it, and you know, you see, you see it referred to in all kinds of cop shows, right? Crime shows, is the dark web. And I... The dark web, tell me what the dark web is. So, everybody knows what the internet is. You can go to www.whatever.com and yes. get to your, the website you're trying to get to. But you don't have to, there's a, there's a whole other set of the internet that's sort of behind the scenes that you can't get to with a typical browser like, you know, Chrome or Internet Explorer or Edge or anything like that. There are special browsers that people use called Tor, and they get information and are able to share information kind of off the, off the record, if you will. That's why it's called the dark web. Right. It's because Google and other search engines don't really know this information is out there. It's not indexed by Google, so it's hidden from every, everyday people getting to it. Right. So this information is out there. So I did something fun. We do this, um, we do this for a lot of customers. We run this uh, dark web report. Oh, that's for... And this dark web report I did for scbiznews.com. That's for us. Which is Rick's company. What this actual what, what this report actually shows the is, dark web <clears throat> compromise report. I'm scared to even open this. Well, what this shows is everybody at with an email address that ends in at scbiznews.com. Got it. That is harvested off the dark web. A lot of times, this includes an actual password or a hint of a password that uh, has been uh, harvested as well. Man, my email address is on here. Your what email the, address? What the heck does that mean, Derek? Well, what it really means is that 
your information could be bought and sold on the dark web and used against you. This well, that's comforting, Derek. Thank you. This report is just a piece of information that we use as a company to give to our customers. Um, when you see your name on this list, the smartest thing that you can do is change passwords on all of your accounts, your local computer, your banking account, your Facebook account, social media, things like that. Because once the password is changed, this information really becomes a little bit stale. So there's a column on here that says password hit source. And there is a whole lot of email addresses on here of our staff, mm -hmm. former employees. Uh, there's a lot of them. That's correct. I don't know if it's a former employee when I run this. Right. So I just get everybody that's at of course, domain of course. name. But the source is where the compromise was found. And so there are, there are pretty well-known hacks that have happened over the years. Uh, South Carolina Department of Revenue got hit. Target That's got right. hit. That's Home right. Depot got hit. Ashley Madison got hit. Don't know if you're on Ashley Madison or not. But that kind of information is available on the dark web for people to buy and sell. All right. Well, you have made me concerned, and we will talk after the show. <laughs> Let's talk about cloud jacking. So, what the heck? Well, so uh, these days, so much information that we keep is stored in the cloud. We don't even think about it anymore, but if you've got an Apple ID account, or you've got a Microsoft account, or your pictures are stored up at Google, or whatever, that information is out there, and it's, it's in an infrastructure that you don't have any control over, right? It's, right. It's, you don't you don't have any way to get to that information physically. Right. But if your information is compromised from one of these sources, all that information can be downloaded or accessed or uh, republished without your information. Lots of pictures are out there that have, um, you know, you might not want shown on the social, on social media sites or whatever. And we're gonna get into this a little bit later on. In, pictures like that can be used to do things like deep fakes, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But that's where these, you know, there's public figures have pictures all over the world, <laughs> right. but people like you and me that are not necessarily public figures, um, people would have to harvest that information yeah. from from a cloud source. Got it. For example, got it. Uh, companies also use the cloud for, you know, storing important data. So it's especially important if sensitive information is stored on the cloud for your company, that that's well protected as well. Right. Mobile malware. Well, so mobile malware gets a, gets a little bit into the cell phone business itself, um, especially Android phones, because people can create applications that will run on a cell phone and people will download it, and that information the information that's on your cell phone, the information your cell phone sees, where you're at, mm -hmm. uh, all that information can be sent back to some nefarious person at a, you know, working in their mother's basement or whatever, <laughs> right? Right. But that information is harvested from your cell phone. Yeah. And it's harvested from an app that you put on your cell phone. And when you scroll through and click accept at the bottom of their terms of, a, terms of service, you basically gave away all your rights to that information. Now, how prevalent is that these days? Well, I mentioned the Android platform because um, Apple is a little bit stricter about what apps they put on their store. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, it's, it's, every cell phone is subject. Right. If you right. decide you want TikTok on your cell phone and you create yourself a TikTok account, you really don't know where that information is being stored, yep. you really don't have access to it, but maybe somebody else has access to it that you don't want to have access to it. Okay. You're spooking me out, man. But uh, le <laughs> let's go. To be to honest with you, some of this stuff is really is scary. Yeah. And well, some of the stuff that we deal with on a, on a daily and weekly basis is enough to cause people to panic. Well, about. I understand, and your little report has, has got me a little panic-stricken, yeah. uh, so I understand exactly what you're saying. Let's yeah. talk about something else that scares me, and that's deep fake. 
Well, we, we talked about deep fakes a little bit, and yep. what that really means is I can take a video of you or a picture of you, and I can superimpose somebody else's face on that image. And it might be something as innocent as you and I sitting here talking, but it might be something as nefarious as taking your image and, and superimposing it on a pornographic film, for example. Right. The technology that's available now with automated, with artificial intelligence makes it almost impossible to tell that it's not really you. Yeah. And so if that pornographic film with your face on it happens to get shown somewhere, it could cause a lot of, a lot of embarrassment for one. Right. And it can be used as blackmail against you. Right. Uh, we see a lot of, we see a lot of blackmail using deep fakes. Yeah, there's all kinds of comments I could think of here, but they would go directly to the blooper reel, so we'll move on. <laughs> social engineering. Well, social engineering is an interesting topic because despite all the protections that we can put on your network to protect servers and data that's stored on your network, so much stuff can be harvested without, without that bypasses all of the all of the technology that we've got in place. Mm -hmm. For example, I can go to your website. I can see that you, you know you're a big wheel at SC Biz News. I've got your email address. Maybe I can find out who the president of SC Biz News is by doing a LinkedIn search or something like that. Right. So I can put all this information together, and I can come up with a strategy to attack you with some of that information or use that information to to try to get you to divulge uh, some information. Right. The people that do this stuff don't have anything but time and some pretty simple technology. Right. So it doesn't take a lot of smarts necessarily to make this happen. It just takes someone that's, that's savvy and has a little bit of time and um, can just use the tools that are freely available to everybody in the world to, to right. get this information. Right. I tell you what, you've given us a lot of reasons uh, to be a little scared. And I see you picking up something. So before yeah, I go I, any I was going to mention one other thing. Yeah, please. In terms of in terms of social engineering, if you can, um, this is actually just a voided check. Um, is this a real check? It's it's a copy of a voided check that's got a real person's name and address on it. Um, and the reason this is interesting is because the HR person at this guy's company got this check, a voided check with instructions to change his weekly direct deposit oh to go goodness. to this bank account. And it actually got changed, but then this per this HR person just double checked to make sure that it was correct. And they went and fixed it before anybody lost any money. But that's as simple as it is. All you have to have is a bank account and a routing number and some fictitious piece of information. Right. And I sent it to your HR department. Yeah. Well, I told you, You've said a lot of things to scare us. Tell me something that's going to make me feel a little more secure. What do we need to do? Well, the biggest thing, that, the biggest takeaway that I have for people that are watching this is engage someone that's got some technical abilities to, to do a dark web scan for your company. Um, put the protections in place for your company that are ne that's necessary, but the, the one thing that I wanted you to know and the viewers to know is you've got to be diligent. I can't protect you from everything that's out there. I can't protect your Facebook account. I can't protect your social media accounts. I can't protect... We've got to what, do our part. If, if you don't do your part, then none of the protections that I put in place necessarily matter. Right. I hear you. Derek, that is really good information, and we're going to talk about this dark web <laughs> compromise report as soon as this video is over. I appreciate you stopping by. I appreciate the opportunity. Oh, my goodness. It's a lot I, of fun. and um, It was fun. Yeah. It was fun. All right, folks, that concludes another episode of Industry Trends, and it will be on SC Biz TV along with a lot of other cool stuff, so check us out. We'll see you next time.